Today I have Pippa Bailey with me. Pippa, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, hello, I'm a, um, a horror and a sci-fi author from England. Um, I live in a, an area called Tropshire, which is where Lord of the Rings is kind of based on Northern Shire anyway. Um, I've been writing for about four years now. Um, it's only sort of starting to take off in the last year and I'm having a great time doing it. Very cool. Can you tell me about the books you write? Um, yeah, mostly I've done uh, charity anthology work um, with a company called Berdizo Books and uh, the charity varies from, from month to month. The owner's got a, a severely autistic son so we tend to do a lot of stuff for, for autism works. Um, at the moment I'm working on a, a 10 part series that I'm not going to reveal the name of yet. Um, I've got a novel that I'm aiming to get finished this year and um, a couple of other stories for um, sort of group anthologies coming up soon so I've been working on those today in the garden. Very cool. So what do you have published? Um, I have, see, my first story was called Scarred, and that tells you about a, a woman who digs herself from her own grave and uh, tries to escape some woods after being attacked. Um, Trumpocalypse, uh, The Ballad of Tiny Hands, which is a bizarro story uh, that you can probably still find on Amazon. That's in a, a group one. Um, the People That In Darkness Sat, which tells the story of a, a severely abused boy who um, makes a pact with the devil and as an adult he um, has to bring the devil eyes in order to keep his sight. Um, that's got a bit of a harrowing ending. Um, got uh, ooh, In For A Shock, which is, uh, is my, my favourite piece I've written. That was um, for an electrical anthology. It was all about a woman who wastes electricity who I based on myself and um, she comes up against uh, electrical creatures who try and steal her spark of life for wasting electricity. Um, and uh, the last thing I had published was um, Nine Ladies Dancing for a Christmas Anthology, which was um, about a, a painting, women escaping from this painting and going around and uh, trying to find their one and stealing soul energy from men and it was a very sort of empowering story with lots of men kind of being severely destroyed but it was a lot of fun. Very cool. So it sounds like um, a little bit more darker writing Oh, is yeah. what calls you? Yes. I, I tend to write, yeah, most things I tend to write are quite dark and harrowing. I tend, I've got a very staccato style. So it's very punchy and fast paced. I don't tend to flow so much, um, which I'm trying to edge more into with the stuff I'm writing currently. I'm trying to add a lot more of my own personality into it rather than keeping it uh, so bleak and, and sort of um, nihilistic as my other things. My characters don't survive. <laughs> You're like, in my future books they will live. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> no promises. They behave themselves. No, no promises. I like that. So it sounds like you're very, very busy. And, Always. Um, that's really cool. So one of the things um, we like to ask are, what do you love about being an indie writer or indie artist? I, I love the opportunity to express myself. Um, it's one of those things where you spend years trying to work out what it is that you want to do. And everybody's always saying, oh, try this, try that. And then it just strikes you one day that maybe I just want to put my ideas out there. I mean, I'm, I'm a trained uh, composer and I've spent years writing music, but it's hard to tell a story that everyone else can comprehend with music. Um, so I was in an accident and I just started writing because uh, I couldn't walk. Um, and it just sort of turned everything around. I felt so much freer and I just love the opportunity to just share your ideas with people and, and sort of interact with other people that are doing the same thing and have had the same sort of enlightening experience of this is what I want to do. I want to write. You know? Yeah, it's interesting when it comes. Um, I, I interview a lot of people and um, I have the range of people like from birth I knew I was a writer. Um, I was always writing and then there's people in similar like I'm I'm from the school of I like five years ago I decided I had a strong image and I decided to write yeah. it wasn't like something I ever planned on doing if you would have told me 20 years ago oh you're gonna be a writer I would have thought you're ridiculous so exactly. is that did you ever like I mean did no, you ever dabble I, at all in writing 
No, um, well, I, I suppose as a child I wrote a few sort of short stories, and they were horror stories then, so it was like ghost stories and things as a child, but it was never something I thought about doing. In English, um, like punctuation and grammar, I, I have dyslexia, and it's something I really struggle with, so um, I've spent a lot of time having to study, because I really study writing, and I study language and grammar and listen to audiobooks that, that Mike lends me, and everything to sort of try and push myself to be better, because I really struggle with language, but it just... Um, it just I had this idea for a story and I couldn't go anywhere and I thought well if I can't go out and do anything myself why don't I make my characters do what I would want to be doing instead and it just was like it went from there that's fascinating I I'm seriously impressed that you were able to turn you know like the whole turn lemons into lemonade oh I'm disgustingly positive and silver lining and rose tinted glasses everything which I find so contrary with the horror writers that I talk with, like talk, like Michael J. Elliott, the sweetest man ever, and writes the most disturbing things. I mean, it's so interesting to me to see this other side, and even Stephen King seems like a very nice person. Yeah, no, he he seems totally down to earth. He's he's the, but I suppose it's um one of the things you learn early on is this kind of a, a not a persona that you create almost, but you kind of gain this persona and. Uh, Stephen King's the everyman. He's the approachable man. He's the the guy next door who could be writing something horrible, but also he'll help you mow your lawn. Um, but but everybody sort of gets this this persona, and and I seem to have, have ended up with one of the the nice guys in horror because I'm just I'm like I like to be nice. I, I believe in karma. Um, I have to be my my day job requires me to be nice and and level headed. So it's just yeah, it's interesting. That's very cool. So, did I miss anything that maybe you want to talk about? Well, I can I can just recommend that I got given this gift most recently, which is one of these things, and I cannot recommend. It's it's called an Alpha Smart, and people are going to tell me I'm wrong, but it's it's a bit like an electronic keyboard, and it is one of the best. In fact, it is the best gift I've ever been given. Um, you could take it anywhere to write. You could sit on the toilet. You could sit at work. You can do whatever because it's not particularly bulky. It's about you know it's about the size of a book. It's got 10 files, you can save everything to it, and then you just plug it into your computer and it uploads the stories, but there's no internet, there's no distractions, nothing. You just take it somewhere you go and write, and it has increased my output by... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm writing sort of 5, 6K a day now instead of writing sort of a couple hundred words when I get home from work. It's, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend if you can if you can track one down, buy one. Very cool. So is it something where you can't go back and, like, edit... Yeah, you can go back and edit. You can um, you can go back and edit. You can do whatever you want with it. It spell checks. Oh wow! Um, but also, literally, you just plug it into your computer and open a Word document, and it just types the whole thing into the Word document for you. So it's on your PC, and you just edit from there as well. That is um, brilliant. But for first drafts, it's it's amazing. You just go sit in a park. You're not worried about battery life because it lasts almost forever. It's double A's. It takes. It's got no images or anything. So you go sit in the park. It isn't affected by sunlight shining on the screen or anything like that. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. I love that. That is mm. very useful information. Do you have anything else that we must know about? Mostly I just sort of recommend that people go and study their writing. It's one of the things that I've discovered recently and that kind of scares me is the amount of people that w desperately want to be writers and aren't willing to take constructive criticism. I mean, you should you should feed off constructive, constructive criticism, my words out. I mean, I, I want it constantly. I want somebody to tell me something's rubbish so I can better myself. And it scares me that people aren't willing to do that anymore. They will write a first draft and release it into the world. And that's it done. That's their story. And the second you try and sort of give any, anybody any advice or recommend reading, you don't get anywhere anymore. People aren't willing to learn. And I think it's a really sad state for indie authors when half of the community aren't actually willing to put their best work out there or, or read, write, study, anything. It's, it's a bit worrying, really. Yeah, it's always good to have someone look at your work. And I like it when they don't try to change it. Yes. Or if they put a note on the side saying, like, I kind of see what you're doing here, but could you do something less like that? Or well, you're doing this, what about what about this? You just kind of, you, you derailed. I like it when people give you, like, like you said, I'm, my last editor, um, that I worked with a lot, um, Ellie Fitzpatrick. She literally said, stop being lazy. That's exactly, that's what you need. It's like if you're being, <laughs> like, 
if you're being lazy with language, you know, everything is so amazing instead of it's spectacular, or everything's really sad instead of morose. Well, I had rushed a scene, and yeah. it was, and she's like, "Write the scene." I'm like, "But I don't want to." <laughs> so. <laughs> I know that's, that's horrible. That's, that's the thing is if you don't like the scene you're writing or you're not enjoying it, you're going to miss out the action. It's, you've got to feel it. As, I see, as an author, you've got to go through the pain your characters go through to create a realistic world for your readers. You've got to put yourself in these horrible positions that then leave you sitting there in the evening trying to go to bed going, why am I writing this? Why am I doing this to myself? Exactly. You know? But exactly. You've, got, you've got to go through it. It's harrowing, but I think it's it's part of the the sort of the sad side of being an author you've got to go through the crap to produce something wonderful exactly so is there any other advice you give to an up-and-coming author um go get the book how not to write a novel because it's very informative and fun it's light-hearted and it's it's an easy read um a lot of people say go get stephen king's on writing it's great but it's very autobiographical and i don't want people to sort of feel like they should get stuck in his style of writing um because he's a pantser, not a plotter. And a lot of times, if you want to write a lot of words in a short period of time, you've got to plot. Um, and uh, Rain Hall, she writes lots of books on writing. So I think there's the word lost diet, um, things like that, which are absolutely brilliant for when you're trying to get a large piece of work together. Um, and just read. Read as much as you possibly can. Read something every day. Learn something new every day. Learn any word every day if you can. It's, it's something I tried to do, so I've got a weird vocabulary. I did one of those sort of, you know, those new word a day toilet paper things, but that was my, my worst studying at university was uh, was to learn a new word a day. I love that. You have such great information, and you are very positive, and you actually surprised me. Because like I said, I was expecting someone scary. Oh, no, not at all. No, I'm, I'm really very, very not scary. <laughs>